I've been getting requests on how to start the IRB process or Institutional Review Board and in some countries, the Ethics Committee. What are the steps? How do I answer the questions? Why do they make me change so many things? It is often tedious and so many people get stuck at this stage. And because I was struggling with it myself, I actually joined the committee to understand how they think. So today I'm going to share some insider tips so that you can increase the chance of your approval the first time around. If you don't do it properly, the IRB committee is going to ask you to revise it several times. Then I will also share the steps and strategies I use to complete all of my paperwork fast. So step one, training. Make sure you and the people included in the IRB apl application have the appropriate training and certification. This is really important because training is time consuming. And so if you don't start early after you have submitted it, then you'll realize that, oh, um, so-and-so did not have the uh, relevant paper. Another person did not have certification, so they cannot proceed. And now you have to wait for two or three months. Step two, get your materials ready. If you want to cook, you need all of your ingredients ready so you can make it fast. So it is the same here. So make sure you go to the institutional IRB site and download all of the templates you need. Research protocol, all the consent forms, recruitment materials. Then save it in a folder in your computer, bookmark it on your um, browser. That way you're not always looking for all the different forms. Step three write the research protocol. Now this one, you have to use your own institutional's template. And so now when you have that template, answer all the points as best as you can, write the research, why you choose this particular participants, what is the inclusion, what is the exclusion criteria, what are you actually doing for, with the patient and what are you collecting? It is really important to also separate out what is part of regular care and what is research. So IRB committee likes to see what is different. Then typically halfway through, people will get stuck at a certain point because there will be a bunch of questions related to human subjects protection. So what do the IRB want to protect? A few things. One, bodily risks. Two, privacy. Three, data security. And four, how clearly you balance the risk and benefit and how do you explain it? And so make sure you talk about these four points as clearly and as concisely as possible. Step four, additional documents that you need. So depending on the type of research project, you may need the following extra things. One, it is a, an informed consent. You may need a recruitment flyer. You may need an email script if you are recruiting through email. Data collection forms, survey questions, question guides, uh, whether it's, it could be a semi-quantitative interview. Now, after being in an IRB committee, what I realized is low quality informed consent is one of the most common reason the IRB makes the researchers revise the application. So they really, really care about these few things. First, make sure your consent is written in lay language, not in jargon, but lay language. Second thing is this, they want to make sure the study design written in a consent should match the research protocol. You can have the consent saying one way and then your research protocol is a different thing. So that would be deceiving. So they want to make sure that what you write in informed consent is really matching with the actual study. Next, the risk and benefit are clearly stated in the informed consent. They want it to be very clear. Finally, no coercive language. Now let's think about this. If, you, if your loved one is thinking about participating in some sort of clinical trial, what do you care about? So you, be caring, you, you care about what, what does this research really involve? What risk is my loved one taking? Is it worth taking the risk? What is the potential benefit? Is it voluntary? Is somebody gonna force her or him to do it? So as long as you put your sh yourself into the shoes of the participants, you'll be fine. I know conducting a research project is an overwhelming process, so I made the Idea to Paper blueprint for you. This blueprint takes you through a seven-step process from the idea generation phase to the patient submission phase. So be sure to get a copy by clicking the link in the description below. Step five, submission to IRB. Now, this is the actual process. First, you need to determine the type of study, exempt, expedited, and full board. Oh, I used to get so confused about these terms. So I'm going to give you some quick and dirty tips. So basically it comes down to two things. How many people, how many people needs to review it and what is the risk for the participant? So exempt is the lowest level. It's very quick. It means that um, the, the whole IRB does not need to review it. Usually once it's determined to be that status, no further reviewer 
no further reviewing is necessary. These are for research with very minimal risk to subjects and typically projects that are of normal activities to the subjects and when it is anonymous, no identifiers. So if you're doing anonymous survey like SurveyMonkey, usually it's an exempt study. Next is expedited. Here usually there's one committee who has to review the whole package. So it could be the chair or a designated person. And these are only for research involving no more than minimal risk to subjects, including like blood sampling in very minimal amounts or a review of records collecting, uh, collected for non-research purposes, for, for example, chart reviews and survey research. So there are further categories, but this is just an over, um, uh, overview, a general overview, you need to still go into your uh, own institution to find a whole list. Next, full board study. Here, the IRB board members will actually convene or meet to discuss a whole group of them. Here, these are for any studies involving greater than minimal risk. So these are studies that have, uh, include vulnerable populations or include sensitive questions or maybe studies with possibility of physical risk. Now that you have determined the type of study, exempt, expedited, or full board, you can start submitting the form. And here the process is very dependent on your own institution. From what I've seen, mostly there are electronic forms uh, where you just have to fill it in. One trick I do to save time is if the information is already in the research protocol, I will not retype it, I will not recopy it, I will just see C section, three of the research protocol that will save you a lot of time now after the submission it may take two to three months for uh, them to get back to you step six responding to questions from irb so as soon as you receive questions from the irb try to respond as soon as possible that's because the more you delay the longer it takes for your application to be approved and irb committees don't don't meet every day they they are volunteers they're typically physicians who are busy in life they are also um, lay people who are in the community so you actually have a schedule we need time to to meet so just if you delay too much you are going to miss several cycles of the meetings now finally approval once you have approval make sure you keep all the documentation that is really important because um, after w w during the time of uh, paper submission they are going to ask you for all the documentation they are going to ask you for um, the irb number so make sure you keep proper records as you can see this paperwork process is very tedious and so these are some additional ways i make this go fast first is to delegate if you have a team of research coordinators and research assistants great you can delegate this task to them because they do this all the time. They can be very efficient. Um, if not, you can also train the residents and fellows to do it. So it will be a win-win situation. You teach them how to do it. And then now um, you get to teach them how to do a research project from the beginning. One thing I do want to advise is when you delegate, make sure you know the process first. If not, it's just like the blind leading the blind. So for, for the rest of you who do not have a team just like me, when I first got started, I actually use systems to help me. First, I will have all the templates ready. Second, I would have created um, standard answers for different type of projects. If it's a survey, I always answer this way. If it's a clinical trial, I answer it that way. If it's a retrospective core study, I will uh, um, 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 answer a certain question this way. So that way it makes, me, makes it much simpler for me. If you want to know what type of projects need IRB review, I have made another video. So click on the screen somewhere to learn more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.